IVDR. It is why we asked her to present the lecture in collaboration with Peter Vermeij, who is also professor in medicine in KUL Leuven, head of the clinical mass spectrometry platform in the University Hospital of Leuven, and past president of the Royal Belgian Society, uh, Laboratory Medicine Society. The floor is yours. Thank you. Nathalie, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Olivier. I'm glad to hear uh, Peter as well. Uh, Peter Vermeer and I will give an overview of the lessons learned during the pandemic from a regulatory perspective. I would like to thank uh, Frédéric Coton for proposing this topic on the symposium. First, I will introduce the new European IVD regulation, also known as IVDR. Second, I will talk about the implications of the IVDR in Belgium. In the third part, Peter Vermeer will give you an overview of lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic. And finally, I will tell you about the future perspectives. The new IVDR will replace the IVDD, the directive from 1998. The aim of the IVDR was to enhance the quality and patient safety with traceability within a European mentality defending the free market. We still have one and a half year before the date of application. There will be no transposition into national legislation on the 26th of May 2022. In contrast to the directive for which a royal decree of 14 November 2001 has been written in Belgium. As the IVDR defends the free market in Europe, the commercial CE IVD kits will receive a preferential position above non CE IVD labeled kits like in house tests. The majority of commercial IVD will need a new CE IVD label and pass through a certification process with a notified body. Auto certification will become an exception. For both commercial kits and in house tests, IVDR represents strengthened criteria for validation of kits, including clinical performance study and risk assessment. How can you recognize if a medical device? for IVD is CE labeled according to IVDR. The number of the notified body will be mentioned in more than 80% of medical devices. If you don't see the digits under the CE, then the device passed auto certification, which will become very rare under the IVDR only for non-sterile class A devices, which are the devices representing the lowest risk for public health. The IVDR has been published the 25th of May 2017. Then all stakeholders received five years to prepare for it. We are now in the period for adapting to the IVDR. The transition period gives all stakeholders of IVD the time to prepare for the full application. And the criteria have been strengthened for everybody, for all the stakeholders. Not only the economic partners like manufacturers, distributors and representatives, but also the notified bodies who will deliver much more CE IVD certificates. The national competent authorities receiving a stronger role in the public health are also preparing as we approach the date of application, the 26th of May 2022. And we, the labs, 
will also need the coming one and a half year to prepare our inventory of in-house tests and modified CE IVD kits. It is important to know that as we uh, are in this transition period, the conformity of devices can be assessed either under the IVDD, either under the IVDR. At the date of application, all new devices will need a new CE IVD label. But existing devices with the old CE IVD label can still be sold until 2024. And labs can use their stock until May 2025. What did we already do in Belgium during this transition period to the IVDR? The Belgian authorities, the Federal Public Service of Health, gave the role of the competent authority to FAMP, the Federal Agency of Medicines and Health Products. The Royal Decree of 20, the 21th of July 2017 described that FAMP replaced Cienzano in the Belgian Royal Decree of 14 November 2001 concerning IVD. FAMP became competent to control the quality of lab reagents, controls, kits, products for general laboratory use intended by the manufacturer to be used for in vitro diagnostic purpose and software. On the other hand, it is the role of the clinical labs to validate kits. Of course, in-house tests, but also commercial tests. According to the Praktek Richlein Guide Pratique under the responsibility of Cienzano. What is the role of FAMP in the directive? Article 11 says that a post-market surveillance is a right for the competent authority, but it's no obligation to perform it. In Article 16, we see that the role of the national competent authority is rather passive. The notified body has the responsibility to inform the National Competent Authority about CE IVD certifications and withdrawals or restrictions in case of unacceptable risk for public health. In case of restriction, the Competent Authority should inform the National Government who will, on his turn, inform the European Commission. What will become the role of FAMP in the IVDR? With the IVDR, the role of the National Competent Authority becomes active. They need to perform appropriate checks on the conformity and performance of devices and draw up an annual activity plan with corrective action. To realize those checks, the competent authority shall carry out inspections of economic operators. They have an active role in limiting devices representing unacceptable risks for the public health. In contrast to the IVDD, in the IVDR, the competent authority of the Member State shall actively coordinate the market surveillance activities. They shall cooperate with each other and share with each other and the European Commission. In the summer of 2018, the Commission of Clinical Biology at Cienzano decided to create a working group for the interpretation of the IVDR in consultation with FAMP. Since then, we've had five formal meetings with FAMP that were prepared by the IVDR working group. On European level, the Joint Research Centre called for experts at the end of 2019. What is the organisation structure of IVDR working group in Belgium? Well, we have representatives of the Belgian College, 
of Genetics, the Commission of Clinical Biology, the Commission of Anatomopathology, Cienzano, and Lilac. The president of the IVDR Working Group reports to the Commission of Clinical Biology. And within three different sub-working groups, we have already 57 active members who I would like to thank for their investment. The goal of the IVDR Working Group is consultation with FEM to find consensus for the interpretation of the IVDR and to inform medical labs for being aware of the coming regulation. We do this through log GLEM presentations and a lot of professionals in the field have been reached thanks to the letter from the Commission of Clinical Biology to search for members of the IVDR sub-working groups. If you are interested in the content of the IVDR for in-house tests in the lab, please read Article 5.5 and Annex 1. You can easily find the official publications in Google when you enter European Regulation 2017-746 IVD. The advantage of having Belak, Cienzano and FAM together in the IVDR working group is to discuss how auditing procedures can happen efficiently, taking into account the limited resources we all have. Furthermore, we would like to make proposals for guidance for the medical labs on how to apply the IVDR. If we talk about it on Belgian level, FAM can use our suggestions when they meet with the European working groups. Now I give the word to my colleague Peter, who will show an overview of the development of diagnostic tests during the first wave of the pandemic and highlight impactful moments. Nathalie, thank you very much. Uh, so um, I will talk about first the use of lab developed tests, which have been essential at the start of the pandemic for the detection uh, of the SARS CoV 2 virus, and then also have a look at potential lessons from our Belgian uh, approach. The IVDR, as already discussed by Nathalie, will have a major impact. So, briefly, the aim is obviously to improve quality, which is good. Full application May 2022, so not yet in full application, will have a major impact, as already discussed. And the main impact is, in fact, that the use of lab-developed tests or in-house tests will be uh, severely restricted. So, if we look at the regulation itself, which, which can also be accessed via the internet, um, the IVDR gives preferential treatment to CE-registered assays, which have to fulfill a series of criteria for validation, including clinical performance. This is obviously also a very good approach. However, de facto, these are typically commercial assets since registration not only requires good validation and data, but also requires you to spend thousands of euros per year to register and maintain uh, your assay on the market. Lab developed tests, in fact, can only be used within a single institution to cover specific patient needs for which there is no alternative equivalent device on the market. And I will discuss that into more detail uh, a little bit later. But first, I will have a look briefly at the timeline of the COVID-19 pandemic. End of 2019, the first report from China. Already 17th of January, the first lab developed tests for SARS-CoV-2 developed by the group of Christian Droste from Charité. In fact, developed before the WHO reported evidence of man-to-man -man transmission, and fortunately enough, available before the first confirmed case in Europe, which was in France, and the first cluster in Europe, in Bavaria, after a visit of two Chinese uh, people to a car factory. In fact, the Bavarian authorities were able to uh, contain the cluster using uh, this lab developed tests. Then we move on a bit. We have 4th of February, first case in Belgium, important moment, end of February, multiple clusters in Italy, first confirmed Belgian case, 29th of February, followed by a series of cases, uh, and then 18th of March lockdown, and around the 5th, 6th of April, the peak of the first wave. If we now look a bit more at the, the use of the laboratory testing, we had the first lab developed test, 17th of January, 
the first commercial PCR test, in fact, was only available 12th of March, which is just before lockdown in Belgium and well after the clusters in Italy. This was an essay from Roche, which at the same time re received emergency use authorization in the FDA and CEIVD under the old procedure, so no prior uh, submission of a dossier. In fact, however, already 27th of March, Roche Belgium reported supply problems, not only in Belgium, but worldwide. But they uh, had, a, had a prognosis of 400 tests per week. But in fact, if we look at Germany, already the 27th of March, Germany increased its capacity to 500,000 tests per week, more than the global production of Roche, indicating that lab-developed tests were essential uh, in Europe and Germany for managing the crisis. In fact, the WHO was a bit slower even and only uh, listed two, st two tests 7th of uh, April when we were at the peak in Belgium and the European Commission, in fact, only reacted regarding IVD tests and their performance after the peak around the 15th of April with reference to the IVDR, but no reference to the essential role that lab developed tests had played during the first wave. If we now look a bit more into detail to the text, we can have a number of issues which could be very impactful. First, you can only use devices manufactured and used within a single institution. So Charité develops an essay, okay, but can Charité share the essay? In fact, no, after 2022. Then there can be no equivalent device on the market. What does that mean after the 12th of March when Roche launches its essay? It means that Charité has to start instantaneous or stop instantaneous using the assay but then we have the supply problems this is also a major impact obviously and finally the IVDR also explicitly states that you can only address on a non-industrial scale specific needs yeah performing 500,000 tests per week is hardly a non-industrial scale in fact if we look critically we could say that this pandemic would have happened into in 2026 after the, uh, after the last uh, transition period has faded. First, Charité would most likely or maybe not have an asset that it could modify, just like other European labs, to include SARS-CoV-2. Could Charité, in fact, develop an assay which not only de detects SARS-CoV-2, but also other pathogens. In fact, the initial assay used in Leuven in Belgium was an assay which simultaneously detected multiple respiratory pathogens as the influenza season was still not over beginning of March 2020, but that would not be allowed after 2026. In fact, could Charité share its method with other laboratories? One can doubt that uh, based on this wording. Then one can also ask the question whether European laboratories would, even if they would have in-house tests, spend time developing an in-house essay when they knew that the moment Roche, in this case, launched the commercial essay, that they would have immediately have to stop using their essay. Moreover, if one gets even a bit, uh, a bit more, uh, more pessimistic, one could even ask whether I could not just register the Charité essay as CIVD and oblige Charité to buy my essay. This is indeed definitely the case. If I submit the data and validate the PCR primers of Charité, I can oblige Charité to buy my kit, which is obviously completely crazy, but true. So a number of lessons are that we can take from this, uh, from this uh, IVDR is that first, the European Union should consider exemptions for reference laboratories and tests for rare diseases. There is some, uh, there are some, some, uh, some considerations that are being uh, being um, circulated about this, but there is no no uh, concrete action yet. One can also question whether there should not be an exemption for published methods, which ca which can just be copied and registered by commercial companies. There has also been a request for an extension of the transition period for in-house tests when a CIVD becomes available on the market, as was the case for the SARS-CoV-2 here. What is very important as well is that, in fact, there is no obligation in the IVDR for manufacturers to provide guarantees for continuing availability of CIVD registered assets. I think Roche and the other companies did their best, but the fact that we cannot ask guarantees for continued availability obviously would pose major issues in case of a similar pandemic after 2026. The Belgian Society of Laboratory Medicine, in fact, asked the uh, 
a federal agency for uh, medicines and uh, healthcare products to involve Sansan and laboratory medicines professionals to help with the implementation of the IVDR, a process, in fact, which is currently ongoing uh, and this interaction is taking place, which is very good. Of a note, uh, I'm not the first one to discuss Donald Trump today. <laughs> in fact, in the USA, a similar legislation, which would cover uh, lab developed tests, has been proposed in the past, but was blocked by Donald Trump. So in the FDA, and the US, sorry, lab developed in house tests are exempt for similar FDA oversight, which is considered by colleagues in the US as a, 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 good, a good thing, in fact. Then I shift to the second topic, which uh, is the validation of tests in Belgium. Uh, there were, in fact, uh, important quality concerns regarding both rapid antigen and rapid antibody tests um, end of March, beginning of April. Some, uh, some uh, extracts here from, from, uh, from publications, just like El Pais, where there was a major issue with hundreds of thousands of rapid tests from China, and also a report from the UK where uh, they said that they had uh, concerns regarding unreliable tests. This, in fact, led uh, at the Belgian level to um, legislation which um, restricted the use of lab developed tests um, and this legislation was um, published um, the seventh the seventh um, i need to have a quick look the 16th and 17th of um, march so the 16th the federal task force was launched 17th there was a prohibition for the use of self uh, tests for serology and uh, the federal government linked reimbursement of tests to uh, approval by the federal agency for medicine and healthcare products in fact um, end of april um, the federal agency announced a new procedure for validation of serologic tests which was in fact uh, something really new and then uh, the 15th of may finally only we had just for our colleagues, a final decision about reimbursement. If we have a quick look uh, at the timeline, Germany already had the first reimbursement on February 1st of a PCR test. We, uh, the price at uh, 59 euros, which was decreased, in fact, to uh, 40 euros July 1st. So there's a major lag there in, uh, re in uh, the decision on reimbursement. If we then look at... Um, our Belgian situation. So we have March 17th, the prohibition of self tests for six months, which has expired. So they can be sold now. April 24th, the new policy. With this policy meant that the, that the uh, federal agency with Cienciano would designate the laboratory where the validation would be performed and that uh, companies were not allowed to provide kits to other laboratories for validation, as this was considered to uh, a use of kits uh, uh, which might be valuable since there might be shortages. End of April, then uh, kits of the, for the Diazorin DS, Liaison uh, IgG anti-SARS-CoV-2 assay on the, on the Liaison XL were shipped to all Belgian laboratories, but there were unfortunately no performance uh, data. This is, in, tech, in fact, one of the uh, lessons we can take from, um, from uh, this Belgian validation. We should ensure that uh, when we do national validation, validations results are quickly available. In fact, our policy was relatively unique uh, because it did not involve the laboratory medicine professionals or the National Reference Center in contrast, for example, to France, the Netherlands, or Denmark. In fact, it's even it, one of the roles of the National Reference Center is in fact the validation of and development and evaluation and implementation of novel diagnostic tests. So this was uh, um, done without uh, any uh, collaboration of the of the field, which is uh, I think unfortunate um, and also one of the one of the lessons we can learn. Everything had to happen quickly, obviously, so it's understandable that uh, not everything can, can be perfect. Um, on behalf of the Royal Belgian Society of Laboratory Medicine, we uh, did a number of suggestions. Eh? First, we clearly indicated that laboratories should have uh, access to tests for validation, since this is a requirement of the GIED Pratik, uh, Directive Pratik, Praktijk Richtlijn, and that results of national validations on behalf of the government, when the government forces manufacturers to supply kits should be made uh, public uh, faster and we also think that this evaluation should be performed in collaboration with laboratory medicine professionals who are uh, at that time not involved in signing contracts 
or handling complaints regarding the evaluated tests. The fact that everything was combined always uh, risks uh, 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 resulting in uh, discussions about whether there is uh, there is a potential uh, conflict of interest. So I think that's also something we can learn. We should uh, split it up. Please, Natalie. Which are the future perspectives? Because of a vacuum during the last six months, when all efforts faced the pandemic, we did not advance in the implementation of the IVDR. We will try to obtain a postponement of IVDR in line with the postponement of the MDR, for which the date of application was the 26th of May of this year and has been postponed for one year. Nobody is ready for the full implementation of the IVDR. For example, there are only four notified bodies on the European market, and a certification process may take one and a half year to deliver certificates to manufacturers. There are 40,000 medical devices needing a new CE IVD label in one and a half year. It's not realistic to be ready in one and a half year. Thanks to the help of the members of the IVDR working group, the president of the Royal Belgian Society of Laboratory Medicine, Etienne Cavalier, and our European Federation Laboratory Medicine representative, Michel Langlois, we drafted a joint opinion asking for the postponement of the date of application of the IVDR. Postponement would give us time for consultation concerning some important topics. For example, it should be authorized to develop laboratory develop tests with a, with a performance that is at least comparable to commercial alternatives, without the additional need to justify a specific target patient group. Another important topic is to, is to arrange with economic operators a predefined obligatory period to communicate the intention of withdrawal of CE labeled kits of the market if they intend to limit their portfolio. And this in the advantage of the continuity in patient care. Another concern is to prevent monopoly of economic operators. For this reason, instances for reimbursement insurance should participate in the debate. On European level, EFLM has become partner of Biomet Alliance, which is a spokesparty for the European Commission. EFLM will benefit from Biomet Alliance's long-lasting experience on regulatory affairs. Conversely, EFLM will provide Biomet Alliance with specific expertise in questions around biomedical analytics, medical laboratory diagnostics, quality management, and so on. The implementation of the IVDR is managed by the U European Commission Directory General Santé and national competent authorities through several working groups under the Medical Device Coordination Group. Since September 2020, the EFLM has established a task force on European regulatory affairs, the TFERA. They will be at the table during meetings and consultations of the European Commission regarding interpretation and operationalization of the IVDR. The EFLM TF ERA will share relevant IVDR updates, guidelines, activities with all the national societies like RBSLM. Okay, in conclusion, the pandemic learned us how important it is to develop rapidly in-house tests for emerging, emerging infections. Clinical labs can't lose their expertise to develop such in-house tests because of strengthened regulation. This is crucial for the continuity in patient care. Consultation on national and international level stays the best option to move forward and find consensus. 
I am very glad that Alexandre Jogneau from FAMP invited different stakeholders in November of this year for consultation concerning the MDR and IUTR. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. We do not have any questions in the room, and I, the time is moving quickly. I suggest to move to the last speaker. Thanks again, Peter, and thanks, Natalie, for the nice presentation. Thank you.